Welcome back to MSI 2023 and this series between Cloud9 and BLG. BLG coming out swinging in game one. And while Cloud9 had a bit of promise there in the early game, we're going to need to see more from them as we look ahead towards game two. See how they adapt their strategy. See how they can adapt their execution in game. I'm ready. Yeah. I think we can see more. I don't think this is the top level Cloud9 <laughs> we've seen yet, believe it or not. I mean, the, the two things I was worried about most for Cloud9 were Bin and Elk. And I think that's the same. <laughs> now, Nothing still. has changed. Nothing Not has changed. <laughs> uh, still definitely Can't worried confirm. about Good players, turns out. Yeah. I will say, so for the first game, I think we're all in agreement. Cloud9 really looking at the lack of coordination in their engages. With a comp that is built so much on these engages with Kennen, with Rakan, uh, with the Nocturne, and Silas as well, they really need to focus up and coordinate those. You know, maybe some deep breaths, calming uh, ocean noises <laughs> between <laughs> games, uh, and, and pull it right back together here. Well, let's see what their priorities will be. We're about ready for the draft. And already I see that C9 have chosen to ban away Annie. We'll get rid of the Ari as well. So nothing too different from their first iteration. The Cassante, and we expect the Nidalee to be taken off the board. Will things shift here for Cloud9, or will they remain the same? Yeah, I honestly seeing a lot of talk about throwing away the Kennen pick. I kind of agree with that. If you're not going to get good Kennen flanks off with a Nocturne covering you, then you might not be getting those at all. Yep. And Bin was not perturbed at all by the Kennen pick early on. So maybe Cloud switch nine. that one up. Yeah, Cloud9 really debating what they want this final ban to be. They're going to stick with the Nautilus. Okay, so. so very mid-focus bans, of course, Annie just being a generic power pick. Will BLG remove the Maokai? Yes, they will. So I think Vi first pick is a really good option for C9. Um, I know that it was something that throughout their playoffs they typically got rid of, was either banned against something that they also just actively banned. And it looks like they're going to stick with the Zaya. Again, we talked about it at the end of the last game. Going into that game, the way they played the early game, they probably told themselves, we were the ones that overforced. We were the ones that made mistakes. Our yeah. draft wasn't functionally a problem. It was just the way we executed it. If we can calm down, there's no reason why we can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a team like BLG. Uh-oh, looks like BLG are also saying, yeah. I call your bluff. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it. Have to see what the adaptations are going to be in the second man phase. If Cloud9 want to adapt their first pick phase at all, can be just about 100% confident that that third pick on the side of BLG will be the Lucian. I wouldn't be surprised if they actually locked in something like a LeBlanc right now. Make sure that they get MS on something that can have a little uh. bit more agency than what he did on the Silas. Straight up blind? Yeah, that well, because they scary. know that... I was going to say, they know what the next pick is going to oh. be, Illusion. Um, and they're actually going to go for the Scion. Very really risky blind against the bin, I will say. I, I, I do like this, though. You know, the call has been made. Yo, we got bin diffed in the last game. Fine. <laughs> Throw the cannon out the window, replace it with a big, beefy tank that can still provide value even if he dies. And that's the thing about the Scion. He's just kind of this inevitable source of team fight value. When Fiora need to be banned. Okay. Now. <laughs> All right, yeah, I was going to say, there are some concerns. <laughs> this is Bin. Definitely going to have to protect against that. Uh, I will say also, some of the value is kind of reduced because the T1 level 1 Scion play is so fresh in everyone's minds. I feel like it's going to be very difficult for Cloud9 to pull off one of those, you know, suicide Scion level 1 starts. Which, which is definitely very powerful, but BLG are going to have that front and center with T1 yeah, being so recent. Band, Fiora will be next. Yeah. Um, or Jax, it'll be one of those two. And to be fair, uh, we've also only really seen the Scion cheese from red side teams because yeah, of yeah, the way yeah. the horses yeah. are set up, yeah, so yeah, the yeah. angles are just not quite as present. But there's the Gwen. Wouldn't be surprised to see something like a Fiora follow, but the concern is anytime you're facing against Bin, the, the champion pool is pretty big. So. He's got a litany of options he can go for here, and it's really just about limiting the ones you're most scared of. Do you know what BLG could do? I vote Fiora. That's my vote. Uh, yeah, but Camille Gallio. Are you voting Game 5 Fiora, or are you voting <laughs> a different Fiora? I'm just... <laughs> I'm, yeah, it depends what COG would be. Oh, they're going to get rid of Nah. I mean, that's also fine. So now you're looking at Fiora or Camille or Kennen still. Like, there's no reason why BLG can't bring out the Kennen for themselves if they want a little bit more team fight power. Man, that is like a mentality breaking pick, too. Like, if you if you have that Kennen performance in game one and then he takes it and they crush you with some crazy Kennen flanks, that, yeah. that could be demoralizing. Ooh. Or maybe it's just a taunt. It's, it's just a classic. <laughs> I felt like it was a taunt, to be true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never taunt. Ah, it looks like they are going to oh. lock it in. Okay, so saving last pick for Yagao. And Yagao's uh, Talia was crucial in limiting how C9 wanted to play the game. So much value gained from that Talia Ooh. wall. But now the Kindred coming in. Again, Shunavin, who's so good at Kindred. Galio paired alongside it as well. 
Oh, we saw this in the PCS. This is my favorite way to play the game right now. Utility mid, double 80 carries. Oof, I love to see it. So, I will say that I think C9 were expecting the cannon to a degree. That's why they blind picked the Scion. We know that Scion is used as an answer into the cannon specifically. But Cloud9, we know that they have a very deep pool when it comes to jungle options. And Kindred, Blabber is no stranger to this pick. Yeah, and especially it's not just, oh, we're going to have Blabber carry pants now. We're going to have MNS support him. But it's really good into cannon initiation. You have Kindred ultimate to delay. You have Galia ultimate with the magic shield uh, as well. So really good to, as you say, expected counter picks to a Kennen. That Kennen comes in immediately, boom. Throw down two extra circles and answer. How do you how do you best answer the Kennen circle? <laughs> two the, more circles. The more concern, circles. I mean that's true, but the concern is is C9 over preparing for the Kennen because frankly Yagao had a great game. Right? He was always on the side lane, he yeah. was being fun with a lot of resources, and he worked very well with Shun to shut down Fudge finding those flanks. Now they're on Syndra Vi, which is a very well-known, very powerful mid-jungle two versus two, and it's something that can very much bully MNS. Remember, in his debut international best of five. That's a lot of pressure. Blabber pulling up Kendra for the first time in a long time. I think we've gotten used to domestically his identity being kind of setting up MS MNS, and now it's uh, the shoe is on the other foot. And execution always still going to be big. That was what let Cloud9 down in the previous game. Got to see if they can execute better with this composition. VLG, again, fighting against a composition with a very strong identity from the side of Cloud9. Team fighting, beefy frontline, double AD carries, so many engaged tools. Have to see how they respond here as they look to secure match point. The good luck have funds have come out from both teams. We're jumping onto the rift for game two. I'm excited to see the adaptations. While there are a lot of things that remain the same, in particular this bot matchup, the top side is very different. Fudge will be the defender this time. Can he hold on to the weathering storm that he's been, as he will literally be looking to bring the thunder? And as you mentioned, the bottom side of the map, Cloud9 looking to run straight down, take out the ward. Yep. And our feature matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz is about the top laner, but right now there's a top laner in the bottom lane. So let's get a little topsy-turvy here in the game. C9 looking for control on the bottom side. And Cloud9 themselves, they put out this little video on social talking about some of their scrims with VLG and how volatile they were, especially the bottom lane. Sven talking about how the bottom lane matchup really early on in a lot of their scrim games is both of them being very aggressive and often it was BLG walking up. If they dodge skill shot, they win. If they miss it, they lose. In the last game though, let me remind you, it was Cloud9 walking up. They were the ones being super aggressive. They burned a lot of summer spells off of Elk, but when it really came down to the kill, Shun was closer in the jungle and Cloud9 ended up giving away the first blood plus the extra kill there to the BLG bottom lane. We just have to track Early game for both of these junglers. A lot of tools to set up for these ganks. While we expect top lane to be relatively isolated, bot lane, as you highlighted, already crucial. And it was explosive in the 2v2. Once you turn it into a 3v3, it's going to be even more so. Same bot lane matchup. Let's see what C9 have learned from the previous game. Now, Vision was invested early. Oh, hang on a second. Up. Instantly going to get the flash and the cleanse for a single summoner spell. Hugely positive trade. I think they might have been, in, I don't know what they were anticipating there. Sven, just as aggressive this time around on the Rakan. This is a much more favorable trade for Cloud9 than last time around now. That is three summoner spells for one. Remember that by going for the long sword on Berserker, he has a lot of health to play with, but Sven already committing all of his pots means that they have to be a lot more careful in these 2v2 trades with the constant sustain that's going to come out from on in the early level two. This means the C9 bottling while a good summoner trade for the time being, we'll have to play defensively, but Blabber already on his way. Bot to level three secured. As, ooh, good trade once again from Elkanon. Oh yeah, that, that health trade onto Sven specifically is really gonna leave a mark. As you mentioned, he's gotta be the one with the initiation when Blabber comes down. That's what you get when you run an AD carry jungle, basically, uh, in the Kindred. Difference for the Kindred is, at level three, you can definitely get down there very aggressively. It's the same award for BLG, though. I like how it's kind of showing the middle positioning of it. It's not up by Tribrush. Sven went up there with a sweeper. He can't get far enough into the river to actually clear that ward or sweep it out. And so Blabber will get seen again on the same ward as he tries to go bottom. 
Blabber spotted out. Alcanon immediately backing off. And as you highlighted, rinse and repeat from the previous game. But now Blabber feeling a little bit more empowered to invade in the jungle and at least spot out that the blue buff is still there. Yeah, you can tell these two teams know each other pretty well from the from those scrims they were talking about, where they're constantly just micro adjustments to even the position of their wards to be able to get that extra level of Ooh. safety. Bottom scuttle spawn for the Kindred Mark here for yep. Blabber is quite nice for him. You want the 50-50? Italy, though, if he has information on where Jun is, which I believe he does, he can just double grab here with the blue buff being started. I'm not sure exactly if he was able to gain vision or not, but uh, for the time being, he's not going to run the risk. Pit continues to push in that top matchup very much as we expected. C9, they'll likely look for a base relatively soon, but they want to try and get this wave underneath the tower so it starts pushing back towards them. Shun now moving in, I think just trying to get as much information as he can as the wave. They're going to ping out the back from MNS. This is Shun's opportunity to move in and at least get some information. Even if he can't go for the fight, he has a level advantage for now. All in on the bottom side. Feather's not going to get pulled back because of a clean bubble from on. C9. Here Keeping Pryo in the lane. Find the darkness. Blabber could be in trouble here. But... He's going to walk away. Sven just keeping it going. That's Zeke Knight now taking down, but Elk just wants to fire back. Dashing out to safety. TP now being burned on the bottom side for Yagao. They need to get something out of this play. They've burned so many resources on. Leaving before that's first blood. This Nami out of control. Bottom lane is the battleground for the early game this series once again. And once again, it is Sven on the Rakan getting these aggressive trades onto Elk, but going Blabber, down first. Blabber. Mounting Dreadmark. One. Can't get the second or the third. Oh, just trading flash for flash. The cleanse comes back up for Elk, and he's able to remove the slow and create space between him and his opposition. MNS with no TP means that he cannot match on the bot side of the map. Yagao TP, I thought, was a bit of a big overcommitment, but in reality, I wonder if it scared C9 off the play. They felt like BLG were committing to this fight, and that means that Sven ends up losing his life. Jun now sees an opportunity to get himself the Scuttle Crab, and BLG will walk away with a 700 gold lead for now. Certainly not, not a bad start to the game for BLG. And on the top side of the map, you can see the call already stacking up in uncontested for now. A bit more kill pressure onto the Kenny once level six comes around for Fudge, but we're shown on the top side. I just don't think he's going to have that angle of attack. Blabber will see if he can continue to stack up these marks. Of course, reminder, four is the big break point. We're going to be keeping track of. So the Dragon is, of course, uncontested for the time being. Control wards being invested early. BLG with their push on bot. Nothing too dramatic I'm expecting as Bin has the level six. We'll throw down the ultimate, but I think that's mainly just to force Fudge back. We'll stack the Conqueror. Good damage down onto Fudge as he now ticks over to level six. Yeah, that is a lot of damage. Meanwhile, Elk another knockup. Connecting. Elk no cleanse with Flash just coming back up shortly. MS on the way down, looking for the taunt. Elk and a flash out to safety just in time. That's the knock up under the Nami. Can they finish one kill? Berserker gets him! Berserker snipes him with the double daggers and the pullback on will live. But now he's trying to turn one back on his fan. Excellent kill on the bottom side for C9. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Excellent. Berserker was the ray of hope for Cloud9 in game number one. Him getting that kill credit just as they repeat gank onto this flash. Elk, it just came up for him and he's able to burn it. Still get the kill here. MNS though, it cost him a lot on that Galio. Look at this minion wave that gets pushed into his tower. That is a double stacked minion wave. And on the reset, DLG will be able to get the dragon too. So it is a Syndra level six. It is a dragon force here from BLG in exchange for the kill on the Berserker. I'm surprised they didn't actually funnel that mid-farm into Blabber. I mean, if the Galio loses it, it's one thing, but you could have actually gotten Blabber so far ahead with all that XP and gold. Elk, though, really has been the target so far in this series. Game one, he did a very good job of weathering that storm. Game two, though, C9 Elk. are doubling down. Step forward and get the slow down on the Elk. The knockup, Elk does not stop. He just looks to the face of death and walks away. They kill Blabber full compass. They hit him with a laughing emo, just completely and totally outplayed. Oh, Elk is too good. He dodges forward into your face. He does not run from the gank. He kills the ganker. MNS on the way down, though. Cloud9 continuing to try to force on the bottom side. They've got the wave crashing, but Shun is in the area. This Galio has to be careful. Going forward, just as punch, fishing for the taunt. The knockup is there to stop, and he falls. Damage with the winds of war will find their mark. MNS grabbing the kill. C9 continuing to push you out on the way down. C9 going all in for the play on the bottom side. Shun able to walk away for now. Berserker trying to fish over the wall. He's going to flash. So much aggression from the C9. 80 carry to find that one, and now Yagao has to be careful. MNS waiting for those cooldowns to come back up. The sustained damage from the Zaya is going to be tough to match. The feather pullback will not find anyone. Blabber on the top side. 
side. C9 making plays everywhere on the map. Bottom side and top side as well. Finn now gonna try to burn down Blabber. The stun connecting. Finn on the retreat. So much action back and forth, but Finn will walk away. For now, really? the stun roar of the Slayer and Blabber will find the kill. Oh, and Cloud9 are popping off in the early game again. They retake the gold lead barely. MS, it feels like, just decided to take this bottom lane and retake control, barely, barely retaking. The bottom side coming from behind their own tower twice here from the Galio. And then Blabber, after death, he gets right back up from the fountain, immediately goes topside, allows Cloud9 to win both sides of the map, starts up the Rift Herald in the aftermath, and they've called the reset here for their bottom lane. Berserker gonna come up to the top side and push in on those turret plays. MNS playing like he's got Predator, but he doesn't. He's just <laughs> running bot at every opportunity. The man has bounced back massively after game one. He struggled to have an impact, but now he's making his presence known very early on into the game, and Elk really feeling the pressure this time around. And Fudge being sent bottom lane is so impossible, really, to dive a sign to stop him from clearing that wave out. So quick lane assignments coming in for Cloud9 as we take a look back at this. Remember, this is after Blabber died. C9 continuing to commit to this play and make it work. Yeah, uh, MNS refuses to let this bottom lane fall into a hole. And so he's going to sacrifice his minions again as well to do this. There is a price for these plays. These are not free roams for the Galio. When we get back to live, you'll see the CS gap is quite big in mid lane, but it's critical here to get this money onto Berserker and Cloud9 know it. Yeah, it's, uh, it is a trade-off, as you rightly said, Kobe. Like, the, the execution overall here from C9 started off very poorly. I, I'm glad that you highlighted Blabber's initial play where he could basically conceded a kill over, but they were able to very quickly scramble back what was a much-needed set of plays. But the gold remains even because in mid and top, CS advantages are still a plenty for BLG. And MNS, some nice execution, too, under the tower play. You know, he gets the taunt, then he's able to just as punch to the side, dodging the scatter of the week from you guys. Now, now he's able to get back and pick up some CS. And while the gold is close, it's really going to be about where the resources are allocated. The good news for Cloud9 is of their four kills, two are on Berserker. We've highlighted it. One of the strongest, if not the strongest, individual performer on the team. If he can get items under his belt and BLG are not able to shut him down, it'll be easy for them to win fights. But on the opposite side, Finn and Yagao getting further and further ahead makes it hard for Berserker to have room if we're going to go to full five on fives. Yeah. Look at this from the side of BLG with Finn being such a big difference maker in the previous series. That cannon left alone on the top side with the Scion. Bin is about to cash it on his Cole. He has the big CS lead. He has had pressure pushing in on that top side. Keeping our eyes on a potential play on the bottom side. Blabber still only at two marks. Maybe some not super ideal spawns here. Cloud9 just continuing to fish. Eyes on the prize here for Cloud9. Again, keeping a lot of the same draft elements, at least in terms of the bottom lane and early on, changing dramatically in the second half. But the gameplay, still very bot side focused and working out pretty well thus far. Really nice trade there from Elf. As once again, MNS gets pushed in the mid lane. Really don't, oh, they forced Arked. a flash out. Nicely done from MNS. They know they have the damage. Yagao immediately gonna ult. MNS is not that tanky. He has a lost chapter. Not the ghost still though, should be fine. He isn't forced to burn any summoner spells. With the swap, I'm surprised that C9 didn't actually invest a very early held top to try and funnel more gold into Berserker. But they have now brought him up to mid lane. Will they consider throwing MNS down into the bot lane? And yes, it looks like that's exactly what they're gonna do. Berserker and Blabber looking to secure some plates mid for themselves. Then getting aggressive on the top side. It's a long lane. Fudge debating if he just has to ult to get out of this one, but holding fast here. Too much kill pressure quite yet, and meanwhile in the mid lane, the Herald does crash, does not get a lot of damage down, probably just the one and a half plates. Yeah, they just want to get as much money into Berserker as possible, so this is the best of both worlds. You rotate Berserker to mid lane first, then you get to both get mid lane damage on the tower, as well as give at least half of that turret plate to Berserker. Then they rotate fully down to the Dragon, even up the Dragon count, and pretty stable here, even though Fudge on top side, keeps getting chunked out by the Conqueror Kennen with these ultimates from uh, from Bin. And he's been holding on pretty decently. I will say the warning comes when you get Unleashed Teleport from Bin and that Kennen that has been for the large majority of the beginning of the game here, just isolated on top side versus on. When that Kennen gets the opportunity to get the teleport in, the flash ultimate play when he's level two uh, ultimate, uh, level 11 with the rank 2 ultimate, that could be the big moment. I'll also say our observers just highlighted it. I don't know if Fudge did that deliberately, but the reason why he was not dived there was because he was sitting in a pocket of no vision for BLG. 
is able to go back to base unscathed and TP back to top. Now, with the Jack Show completed, he's going to be a very durable individual. Yeah. That will make it much harder for Bin to really threaten in the top line matchup. Once those Merc Treads come through, he's going to be pretty happy in terms of the side they match up. Take all the advantage. Excellent. Bubble again coming in on. And Spanish is going to backstep here. And if we get later and later in the game, execution is going to be the question for C9. In the previous game, weren't able to make their composition work. Should be easier this time around, but it's going to have to kind of do the exact same thing that BLG did in terms of respecting the flanks, keeping an eye on this cannon. Bin is the power point, and as you highlighted, only teleport not quite there yet, but once it is, all of C9's plays become significantly more volatile. Another thing to think about here is this this nice buffer. Knockback fights on two fronts. Elk! What was he doing there? Eminence manages to make it out. I'm not sure what happened with Elk in the mid lane, but Shun. Now on the retreat, Blabber continuing to step forward. A lot of damage could come in from Yao. He's level 11 Syndra. Oh, give me that replay. I want to see that now. How do you get back. under there? This fight's across the rift. On to the mid lane. Blabber did just use his flash in that exchange. Jun had to flash to get away to safety as all of Eminence's summoners drops. But as you rightly said, a kill once again going in favor of Cloud9 as Elk finds himself 0 and 3. Look, sometimes you live up to your namesake and you just like run headlong into a vehicle, you know? It just <laughs> happens to the best of us. All right, here we go. Oh, doesn't he know Sven is there. I yeah, think. he wants the, he wants the full calling damage. Sven just over Raptor wall. Ultimate flash W. Good night. Sven Pite. It's all unfortunate for Berserker that Sven secured the kill, but they'll take it. It's a gold advantages at 14. Presented by MasterCard, the difference is largely building in Bin's favor, but to be honest, against a sound that's very much to be expected. Ooh, ooh, Galley all coming in. Yeah, that that's a little rough there. I will say up until this point, this Galio play has been so good for MS, you know? He, you don't want a big CS lead on your Galio. You want plays from your Galio. Oh, yeah. And his plays bottom side uh, have been exceptional thus far. His play with Blabber, the carry jungler, but that ultimate, of course, the coordination again. And it was not an all-in from Bin, not even close. And while C9 right now, as you saw in the match card, gold difference, have their advantages where they want them on their double 80 carry threats. It's really important that they hold on to those utilities, those abilities for the fights to come. ELG stacking members up around the mid lane, Ben coming down from the top lane just to make sure they can threaten if they need to. Yeah, BLG are thinking right now, hey, we got a Galio ult for free. Let's get our team fight in. You know, Ben does have flash and ultimate and a le uh, level two ultimate at that with his level 11 coming in, so. They send him back to the top side, push in the minion wave as Cloud9 are fully grouped up in mid. Come up to the side. Stun gonna connect. An early scout of the week, just poke. Raining down. Cloud9 so starting the Herald. BLG, do they want to respond? Bin on the top side, C9 debating. Need to be careful of this flank. They will use the Scryer's Bloom. Or the blue trinket to spot him out. Who's gonna mark this cannon? Walk up to him. Lower and lower. Bin gonna clear out the ward. C9 has to be careful, but immediately Fudge is going to try to get things kicked off, but now his backline is exposed. Bin trying to find an angle. C9 retreating into the pinch. They have to be so careful. Bin now dashing forward, sensing a win moment of opportunity, but Berserker just going to burn the ult and walk away. Yeah, Ber Berserker burning the ult not to protect himself, to protect Fudge, the teammate ult there, to be able to lay down all those feathers and cut off the entrance into the jungle. I mean, I also saw that Giga ultimate come out, and I was like, that's a five-man stun if I've ever seen one. <laughs> and so, as you rightly said, Berserker throwing that ulti down, man that there was no risk of the LG over committing. So the LG largely just spectators to the objective secure from Cloud9. Nothing really gained for them. And this will allow C9 to open up the map a little bit more as Elk gets a little bit of damage down onto the mid tower. The LG in a slightly better position for the Dragon right now as resets start to come through. Yigao gonna go back to base, Bin gonna do the same. And you imagine our next exchange will be thrown down towards that side, unless C9 want to choose to cross map, given that they do have the Herald. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them come back into the mid, drop the Herald, use that as a point of pressure, which then gives them access into the river, and they can start up the objective. And I think the game is going to get a little bit harder if C9 can't really leverage the full power of their team comps. You see these CS leads in mid and top specifically just continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And yes, Cloud9 are putting more resources into Berserker, but Berserker's still behind Elk in terms of individual CS, so it's a tricky puzzle for Cloud9 to solve. And remember, it was around this time in the previous game where the picks started to come through for BLG. The picks really made the difference. This Vi from Shun, ultimate Never. ready. Mounting Dread comes out, Colin going to be used. Elk able to walk away, it does cost him the heal, but not a whole lot else. Mid lane tier one broken down, Cloud9 taking the control, setting their sights on this Cloud Drake. Yeah, they group up and they just brute force that tower. Meanwhile, BLG with the split are going to be able to get the top side tower and as well the minions into bottom side tower and pushing mid right now in exchange for this dragon. 
They should be able to get two outer towers, plus Bin is going to get the minion wave on top side all the way up to secondary tower. So while Cloud9 are going to get this dragon, that's a lot of gold in tower value being given over to BLG. Yeah, I think BLG are just playing the map so smart right now. They recognize that it's not worth trying to force a fight, and instead they'll pressure elsewhere. BLG now stacking as four members top. They know that Fudge has no ultimate. But are they overcommitting here? MNS does have the ultimate available, and BLG, they're going to take a little bit of a poke, but they're not going to overcommit too much. And BLG, again, recognizing the strengths of their opponent's composition. In game one, it was everyone pushing their R buttons together and diving. They respected it so much. This time around, it's their 5v5 team fight. So what do they do? They split up the map. They don't opt into contesting this Drake when they don't have to. I mean, it's just very solid map play from BLG across both games. Yeah, BLG, no. The only one even remotely tanky is Shun this time around. So they have to play off of their minion waves, and they have to play off of those ultimates until they get a good angle for those. Oh, oh my, that is... Okay. Uh, no one saw. No one saw. Well, no one that, saw until no the observers yeah, decided yeah. to show everyone. No one saw. <laughs> uh, well, I now guess... Now hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> saw. <laughs> the, the argument you can make is BLG didn't see. Um, there you go. They don't know. They don't okay. know. Nobody snitched. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at you, everyone in chat. Nobody snitched. Uh, <laughs> Vanessa. Continuing to poke forward in C9, they're going to struggle right now because there's not really a big objective to force. The good news is they have a frontliner and Fudge, and 280 carries, they can burn through this objective very quickly, especially once Berserker gets that closer to that second item. Maybe that's where they can force BLG to come fight them. For now, BLG feeling fine, sitting on a 3k gold lead, happy to just continue uh, trading up in terms of side lanes. Very neutral mid game. Of course, BLG have a pretty significant gold advantage, but they do have the tower lead. And a lot of it is coming from the individual CS. When I look at mid, there's a 1k goal gap in favor of Yigao. There's a 2k goal gap in favor of Bin. So if I, my math is correct, one plus two <laughs> does make three, which should actually equal the goal nice. gap. <laughs> they, they forbid us from doing math on air, but look at you, breaking the rules. Uh, but the the Welsh right. mathematics uh, yeah. coming in hot. <laughs> what I think, <laughs> quick maths. Um, uh, what I think is important to take away is that that goal difference is not reflective really of the game state. Yeah. Because MNS and Fudge being down in gold is not the same as like two carries being down in gold. The fact that Blabber and Berserker are still in very healthy positions, the fact that their atomization is still coming through means that Cloud9 is still very much in comparable terms when it comes to the straight up power of the two team composition. And some critical things here for Cloud9 that they need to keep in mind, they have shown this already in this game, but they've been grouping up very nicely to create that ball of safety. They know that if they let this cannon get a flank, they could get dismantled. So they have to worry about Nami ult from one angle, possible flash cannons from the other angle. And they've been able to use their numbers to brute force objectives like this, try and catch up, get some of this tower gold. Meanwhile, they always make a sacrifice in order to do that, though. And the sacrifice this time around is, of course, the mid and bottom lane. As Bin is pushing in bottom, and Elk plus Shun chunking away on that mid turret. And BLG pushing on two points at the same time, but luckily Cyan is so hard to move out of these lanes that uh, Fudge's job for the last few minutes has just been walking to waves that are pushed in, clearing them, and living. And that's that's about all he's done. Yeah, C9 are largely playing a 1-4 setup, whereas BLG are taking advantage of 1-3-1. Yagao is on the wave that's likely to be pushed in the most, just because once the tower drops, he can very quickly catch that wave with his wave clear. Meanwhile, Bin and then Elk and Shun as a duo can pressure elsewhere on the map and get some deep vision. C9 are very reliant on these objectives to force BLG into an area where they can find these front-to-back team fights. But BLG are playing patiently. That's Bin. All D coming in for Fudge. He gets the damage down, but not the knockup. Fishing for the knockup now. Bin immediately going to stun him out of the decimating smash. Ben coming into the bottom lane. They're all eyes on the BLG top laner. Ulti already burned, and that means a quick shutdown. Sven picking up the gold. And the brute force play pays off. They make the rotation over. Three Cloud9 members coming to collapse on that bottom side. BLG, they're going to have to clear up some, some vision around Baron, but Cloud9 would call that bluff. They get the kill, and they're going to get another outer tower. Yagao will finish off secondary turret here, so still money. And again, the side lane secondary turrets are the, the most expensive turrets. Those things are 800 gold for opponent team. Um, but it still is going to be a positive play there for Cloud9. It, it's got to be frustrating if you're Cloud9, though, because you recognize what you need to do as they look for an engage. Only coming out, the stun now coming in, but Berserker not quite in a position to follow up. He's immediately going to use the Gale Force. Sven is overstayed. The bubble not quite connecting. On anticipating him dashing out a bit sooner. So Elk blinking health bar. They will retreat. They get the TP as well. I love this stare down between Sven and Elk. Neither of them backing down. They constantly are going for each other's throats. 
This time around, they both walk away, but summoner spells from both will be the card. And that's the biggest thing. With Dragon spawning in five seconds, Fudge having the TV, TP available, it means that there is a prime target that C9 have their eyes on. Sven not having the ultimate should be off cooldown relatively soon, but not in time for this Dragon. So the question is, do C9 want to gamble it, given that they did sacrifice Berserker's ult as well? And look at this. With this, with this uh, split push from Fudge, Cloud9 are the ones that actually have the split push advantage, while BLG are the ones with the objective advantage. They've got Shun and Din taking down the Dragon, while the rest of the team he is now in the middle of the entire team. He's now going to get rooted up. Excellent use of the Ever Frosty Gow. There's nowhere for him to go. He's going to throw down the ultimate, but that's a quick pick. And now they can turn their sights back onto the dragon. But it looks like it's going to be too late. Shun stealing that one away. BLG now on the retreat. C9 should really look at a Baron right now. They know they have the numbers advantage. Shun and Bin, if nothing else, they can force TPs. They can force a fight. They really didn't have to commit like any ultimates to that exchange. And now you look at Sven and Berserker. Their ultimates are very quickly coming back up. Oh, it's going to get spicy because Yagao also doesn't have teleport. So that death timer is death timer plus. Us walking all the way to the Baron. Ward over the back of the pit. Just don't 50-50 this C9. Okay. They have to do it though. They have to keep the pace of the game going. They might not get another opportunity like this to find such an don't advantage for free. It. It, don't trap yourself inside the Baron pit against a cannon. Just say that. Okay, getting lower and lower. BLG looking for an angle in. Shun desperate to steal this one. Shun oh. takes it! CLG bet on the 50-50 and the coin comes up tails. BLG making it work. Bubble on to two. MS all decanceled. BLG laughing straight to the bank on the back of that play. Why did C9 50-50 it? They had such a good position and they take the gamble against some of the best. <laughs> against Shun, man. Like, you, you can't take this gamble. You've got to make the commitment to turn or keep him out of the pit. And he, ah, oh, just so well played from Elk. Yeah, so MNS was was looking at him, but he was scared to fully commit to keeping Shun out of the pit because Elk is right behind him and he, he thinks he's going to die there. But sometimes you have to make a, a sacrifice in order to get that Baron, and they don't get the taunt off onto Shun. Shun gets in, he gets the smite for BLG. And it's so crushing now for the side of C9 because you found a window of opportunity, you capitalized on it, but the execution not quite there. The 50 50 Shun winning out on that smite. Credit to him. I mean, that's a defining moment. Yagao's I mean, it mistake was, in the mid lane saved by his jungle. It was good from Shun just because, like, you can see that basically C9 are just putting all their trust in MS to get that taunt and body block Shun. Um, and he throws the Q out early, and then he's very reliant on the additional damage coming out from L. And then the steal comes through, but now BLG. Uh, have so much control over this game. MNS caught out, not nearly tanky enough. The chain CC, ruthless with the Lance Respite. Blabber buying a brief moment. Justice Punch out to safety, will be able to retreat. And Riddle coming in clutch. Yep. Just the edge there. Blabber's able to catch him, save his teammate. Ult for ult on junglers then. Buy ult used to get the pick. Kindred ult used to counter it. It's going to be a bit longer of a cooldown, and the Baron buff will He's still allow. Fudge still going forward. He is going to connect on Ben. Can they keep this fight going? Tidal wave coming across the wall. He now pushes for a street. Fudge on his own, but he's too damn tanky. Blabber now on a killing spree. Elk throwing down the calling. Feather's going a little bit wide. Elk standing on the front line, trying to burn through Blabber's quick as he can. Elk sidestep. Dash out to safety. Eminem's trying to finish the job, running it. It wins a war. The extra movement speed won't quite be enough. Everfrost not connecting. Elk, he can feel the wind on his backside, but he will walk away alive. Damn, Elk is so clean sometimes. It is frustrating. He sneaks his way out of that one. He forces the ultimate trade, and he's back. He's going back he's in. Back. He's looking to finish off Fudge. Lord Dominic sends his regards, Fudge. <laughs> Elf bar just getting torn through. It still was a really good initiation there uh, at the beginning for Cloud9, you know, forcing on BLG and picking up those kills, but man, fighting their way out of it. Why can no one I ever play with look this good at 033? <laughs> How is he 033 on Lucian and he's She's just so good. Well, you've never played with me, Draco. So ah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what an incredible bounce back from Elk. Considering how much he was shut down in the early laning phase as well, he's done a fantastic job. And his positioning in the team fights is something we've consistently seen from him here at MSI. Of course, BLG have been able to extend their gold lead a little bit, but as you rightly said, Kobe, this is a good initiation from C9. They're attacking the Siege. Yeah, and Bina has no real way to get out of this play, and then the, the collapse comes in from C9. Yeah, I mean, Cloud9, they, they themselves have done a good job marking that cannon. They haven't been the victim of a big cannon ultimate. However, so much damage here from Elk on the top side with the ultimate, and then he does the same to Blabber. Oh, Those are the man. two carries of the team. That sidestep from Elk, man. He's looking for another kill on the Berserker. He won't be able to find it, but the damage is good. No Bloodthirster yet for Berserker. 
and the pressure is just ruthless from BLG. Knock up there, trying to take the Nami out of the equation. In comes the Galio as well. Velk gets caught by this. It could be disaster, but he's able to sidestep. Red buff there as well. Wants to keep the fight going. Dash to the wall. Dash back to safety. Decimating smash. Will not connect. BLG waiting in the area, but Sven wants to take Ben out of the equation. Sven wants to burn through, but he doesn't have the damage. Ben taking them out. There is no Lamb's respite for C9. They cannot stand in the fight. Berserker has no room to maneuver, and that means MS. Another Lamb for the slaughter as Yagao grabs the double. C9 find a promising pick at the start, but BLG's re engage is ruthless. Ben, without any hesitation, finds what a 3 4 man ultimate and just tears Cloud9 apart. Fudge now left on a side lane. Maybe he's tanky enough to get away with this. His they're ultimate just, should be coming up yeah, soon. Yeah, they're body blocking him so he can't ult to safety. Heads up play from the side of BLG. He'll go zombie mode, walk away. Yeah, you have to be so much more careful when dealing with the cannon when you don't have an exhaust on your team. You know, you, you have to have both of your front line there to really keep him out because with Flash, Bin will get the engage. He does there finally, and BLG get a lot of gold off of it. And they are also going to get Dragon number three. The extra towers, inhibitor mid is now exposed. Bottom lane tower picked up, bunch of extra gold there, and Dragon soul point. And you can see C9 again struggling to find avenues to make their composition work. BLG punishing so rapidly and. Bin being so far ahead, we're starting to feel the difference there where he's able to kill Blabber before Blabber can even throw down the lamp, uh, throw down the lamp's respite, and that's devastating for fights to come. Yep. Gotta get it out early. Sorry, I just noticed Elk has a 400 gold shutdown. <laughs> 036, baby. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would but are you going to argue that he doesn't deserve I, it? I, I, that's I, I, my <laughs> question, bounty <laughs> apologists. Are you, are you coming out? Like, probably deserves that one. I, I look at his play and I'm like, yeah, give, give him a yeah, bounty. Yeah. Give him a bounty. That's <laughs> fair. North America definitely have a target on his head right now. Let's see if they can shut him down. Elk, very close to level 16. The Baron spawns in 25 seconds, and that really will be the deciding fight. You can see how much vision BLG have as well. You look at all these wards littered across Cloud9's jungle, and, and C9 looks the engage. In, trying to find an isolate bin, but bin just on the edge. He's just a little bit too fast. The entire team now split. They have to retreat, but Elk just does so much damage. Where did your mid laner go? C9 instantly deleted the ball. Now coming in, Lamb's respite, but it's just a perfect setup for Bin to follow up. on, oh, looking for the bubble, but he can't quite find it. That's another carry taken down. It is Elk and BLG just tearing through Cloud9. It should not be called Lamb's respite because it's just Lamb's to the slaughter as PLG will tear apart Cloud9. The Quadra kill in for Elk, and that will be game two going to PLG. You need to send more carries. <laughs> Elk's taken down two, and now PLG, the advantage is too big. Cloud9, two different compositions, two different styles, but again, PLG outmatching, outmaneuvering on the map, and outfighting in the end. BLG barreling down, looking to set themselves up for match point, looking ahead to future challengers, looking to send C9 down to the loser's bracket. For now, happy to have the match point. Sven coming in just in time to watch the Nexus fall. BLG dominance in game two. Oh, what a wipe there. Cloud9, they had this cannon in the forefront of their minds from the previous fight. So they sent MS with Flash, the Galio straight at him. But Bin with his E and his Proto Belt yep. just fully kites it out and it's another instance kind of like game number one where after they fail to get step one done of oh my god we got to get this cannon then it's a really long overextension then they're so exposed blg ripped them apart for even taking the attempt at bin and it was frustrating cloud nine so many times it felt like that they were in such good positions and then it just gets taken away from them, whether it be Shun with the Baron still, Elk sidestepping so many crucial skill shots. BLG are playing on form today, and Cloud9 are gonna have to step up if they wanna take a game off of the powerhouse LPL second It's season. a terrifying process for Cloud9. You've already shown two completely different looks in the draft, and already been, again, full confidence here, unfazed completely. Obviously fantastic individual performances, but I think it's so tricky because you were trading down in that game, but you were getting the gold where you wanted the gold to go. You were waiting for that moment where you could just 5v5, and again, BLG just never gave you that opportunity. It makes it so hard to play this composition if the enemy team just won't fight you on these big 5v5s. But that said, get ready to send things over. Not quite yet to the analyst desk. Um, what I think was also super impressive from BLG was the fact that they they played the side lane so well, right? We were talking about it during the game, but every time Cloud9 
went for this like 4-1 or just grouping up as five, sieging an objective, BLG were always getting something else on the map. And slowly but surely, they were just kind of picking apart the map. And then around these objectives, we felt like that C9 could never really get the fights that they wanted. And it's just a reminder of what happened in game one, where like the comp is good, the early game is good, but when it comes to the fights, BLG just don't give you the fights that you want to get, want to take. They're simply outplaying. BLG right now are simply outplaying. They are performing extremely well on stage right now. Absolutely the case, but they're now set up for match point. Let's see what they can do in game three. For now, let's send things over to the desk to break that one down. Yes, yeah, sorry to keep you waiting, Drake Oz, but we did need to get ready. I think just Azale needed to pick himself up a little bit. <laughs> I'm doing fine. Okay. I'm doing fine. <laughs> okay. Everything's fine. Every, okay. Everything's it's okay. Fine. You can admit it. Uh, listen, uh, BLG is looking like the stronger team yeah. so far. Otherwise, they wouldn't be on match point. Azale and, and Ox, what do you think generally has been the things that they've improved on from their play and performance? Because I think that lured a lot of people maybe into a false sense of overconfidence into this matchup. I feel like they're set up for team fights. Uh, I feel like a lot of time in play-ins, there was times where, you know, people were disconnected a bit, people were by themselves, we saw uh, bad vision control around neutrals, but they've been really on point with that. It feels like it's so hard for Cloud9 to find an angle, and then they just played the map so well in this game as well. I mean, I think Bin is playing really well individually also, which has been a big X factor, but I'm going to be honest, I don't even think BLG is playing that much better than, than they did at play-ins, right? I think that, you know, when you look at some of the pieces, I think people were really focused on Bin, who didn't play that well, but bot lane for BLG was crushing it in play-ins, and Shun was still playing well, so I don't feel like it's a, a completely different team. I think, you know, Cloud9 is, is making a lot of mistakes in what otherwise could be a close series. What adaptations did you, you like, Azale, coming out from Cloud9, seeing how they dropped that first game? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the Scion pick was it was basically what I was calling for. I, you know, I said drop the cannon, play for something that you can go front to back. I think they did a good job with that. I think they mitigated a lot of what the cannon was looking for in these flanks. Um, but again, it comes down to execution, it comes down to coordination. I think Cloud9 was more on the same page than they were in the first game, which was nice to see. Uh, but, you know, even in, in one of those final fights that we saw around mid lane, Berserker is basing. You've already gotten one pick on the support, and you're pushing forward without any of your damage deal. And this is just really speaking to kind of like chaotic comms and Cloud9 just making mistakes that they can't afford to do. Yeah, I think both games, they can be pretty happy with the draft and I feel like they were very playable. And as you said, it came down to execution, I think as well. A big part of this game was just the fact that, you know, mid and top lane, yes, it's fine. You have Galio and Scion for them to fall behind and farm, but they were so far behind over the course of the, that game. Towers getting picked up. It's the fact that Cloud9 had the kill lead for such a long time and yet we're behind in gold. Yeah, exactly. Uh, not being able to push that advantage and then the cannon in the hands of Bin, especially deadly as well. It was a lot going on in the bot lane. We joke sometimes that at LCS there's a lot going on around the mid lane as well. But this time around it was uh, all bot all the time. Yeah, and it felt like the skirmishes, there were some moments where it didn't go quite as well as you were hoping for, right? Like the bubble hitting on Berserker denying this play. But I have to praise MNS who was really solid at moving down on that Galio to set a play. So yeah, On got a couple of kills, but for the most part, it felt like Cloud9 had the edge. They uh, definitely tried, and that Nami was... Uh I loved seeing the Nami play in Flash Forward and Bubble. That's a Nami play we like to see. Uh, something that maybe didn't go as noticed when you looked at the way BLG made sure that they stayed in this game and accrued their gold lead is, you know, making C9 play for every objective, making sure that you get all the standing gold, making sure that you're CSing so effectively. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, BLG was doing a really good job. Both their solo laners had, had massive CS advantages. You know, I think Cloud9, again, uh, were able to, to force pretty effectively. I think it was clear what they were trying to do. They were trying to find these engages find the Galio follow-up, uh, but BLG were just saying, that's fine, you can have something here. We're going to take two towers on side lane. We're going to deny multiple waves. And at one point, you know, you, you added up the CS difference between mid lane and top, and both those lanes were equaling like about 100 plus CS for BLG. Yeah, I think towards the end, there was like a 70 CS lead in the mid lane alone. And we kind of saw a bit of this in game one with Fudge falling behind Bin in terms of farm and like by about 50, but it was so much more pronounced here. It felt like the read from both solo laners was really effective at where they needed to be, when they needed to be grouped up with the team for fights or when they could just take a few waves and be happy. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I don't think that the CS problem was, was like was huge because, you know, a lot of the reason that there was that big CS deficit in mid lane was because of the roams, which were great from MS. I think he had a much better game individually in game number two. It felt like he did shake off a lot of those nerves. But the reality is BLG are the favorites. BLG, you know, are, are the better team so far. And you cannot make mistakes. You've got to be on the same page throughout all stages of the game. And it really did come down to the Baron more than anything. Yeah, talk about being on the same page, right? Every second counts, and thanks to the reliable Cisco network, Sean snuffs out C9's hope with this Baron steal. Break it down for us. <laughs> 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, one of the big issues here is that there's there's no there's no sums on Elk whatsoever. MNS is looking on that top side to actually try to just zone off Shun, and this is what they're looking for. But we have Flash available, I believe. It's not actually showing it here um, for MNS, but he didn't actually look for a Flash to actually flash in Taunt. So I think what the call here was was that they were going to have MNS come in and actually look to just peel off on Shun, taunt him up, stun him up, keep him out of the pit, and try to finish. But my problem was there's no reason to even be going for this in the first place. Elk at that point had had no sums available. There's there's ulti up for both Rakan and the Galio. All you need to do is actually look for a hard turn. Or, if you're really wanting to force that hard, you can Kindred all as soon as the, mm. the Vi comes over, keep the bear in high health, kill off the Vi. He can't actually burst it down even you know, if he tries to stay alive. You can all just focus him and burst him down afterwards. So there's so many ways that Cloud9 could have actually done this to make it clean. And that, to me, was absolutely the turning point of the game. If Cloud9 get the Baron there, they're in control. They can clear a lot of the standing gold off the map and take a commanding position in the game. But they flip it for God knows what reason. And that cost them potentially the whole series. Yeah, and I mean, this game, you definitely knew the momentum was already gone. But like, Zerka was trying to reset. He was low. And they're looking for this engage where, you know, half the members aren't there. And Zerka wants to go on a reset. And yes, they do manage to take out the Nami. But it just ends up with them just losing the game at the back of this play. Yeah, C9 looking to make a change. They have to, or it will be down to the lower bracket for them. Um, and they are making a change. They oh have elected God. to move to the red side as well. Look at the damage done between the two marksmen. Whew. Elf was just styling this one. And he had no kills until literally the very end, I think, where he got that quadra. Um, so, you know, it, it, was, it was a pretty incredible performance. Red side, what do you think? Oof. Uh, I mean, to me, it just feels like they're they're trying to throw out what their initial plan was then. If they're going red side, I think they're looking for a solo lane counter picks, and they're going to try to really change up the draft strategy here. I don't think that the drafts have been the problem at all. I've liked their drafts in both games. At the end of the day, I don't think which side they're on even matters. They just have to play better if they want to win. Yeah, I agree. I feel like when you're 2-0 down, you do want to shake things up. Like, there's that feeling of, oh, we've lost on blue yeah. side. Maybe red's different. But again, I agree completely. The draft hasn't been the problem. Yeah, BLG are up 2-0. There's no way they make it back now. Is it C9 or is there? <laughs> or how does that tweet go? I'm trying to help you out here. But it's BLG well, that are now... BLG on the 3-0. There's no way Cloud9 can come back from here. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, let's see if it happens and if C9 can rally it back or if BLG takes it home. MNS on the way down, looking for the taunt. Elk and a flash out to safety just in time. That's the knock-up under the Nami. Can they finish one kill? Berserker gets him! This, this is nice intro. Buffer. Knockback flights on two fronts. Elk! What was he doing there? The <laughs> I don't know, I have a flash, by the way. For BLG looking for an angle in. Shun desperate to steal one. Shun oh! takes it! Lamb pressman, but it's just a perfect setup for Ben to follow up. Oh, looking for the bubble, but he can't quite find it. That's another carry taken down. It is Elk and BLG just tearing through Cloud9. It should not be called Lamb's respite because it's just Lamb's to the slaughter as BLG will tear apart Cloud9. New and existing customers can choose the phone they want, like the incredible iPhone 14 on us. Not to brag, but I'm on Verizon now. And I got to choose the phone I wanted for free. Not that you're bragging. Choose the phone you want on us. Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings.